Yeah. What a roly poly. My entire bar needs cleaned out. Do I have enough rams? Hi, Jimmy. Yeah, boy. So I made a last minute judgment call. <coughs> what are you saying? You're just starving, Popcorn. I know. <coughs> Good morning. We are home. I have not even said hello to the ladies yet. I know I left Carissa with the remainder of a haylage bag and I just want to make sure we're in good shape there or if I should be opening up another bag and incorporating what's left into it. Just a little bit left right there. Oh yeah, we're good. I was really, really scared we might run out when I was gone, but uh, it looks okay. And I even have room here. I think what we're gonna do is, my entire bar needs cleaned out. Uh, most especially the pen where I'm gonna be lambing here very shortly. The countdown is now on. So Mark suggested we put uh, the manure here where those augers are, we'll put it there. And then when stuff dries up here, he might try to uh, spread some manure and get it off this before first cut hay, because we'll be putting first cut hay here. Yeah, I might do that, but I did not tell Carissa that that was in the plans today and she did chore. So I'm gonna go say hi to the sheep, see which pens she's bedded and then make a judgment call whether we start at this today or start at this tomorrow because tomorrow and Sunday I'm on chore duty too so I could just have a full work weekend and let today be a day of like recovery. I've been up since three this morning. Let's go say hi to the sheep. I know you guys haven't seen them in a bit. Home sweet home. The other thing that's gonna happen here in the next couple days is right before I left, the day before I left, I cedared my next group of ewes that I want bred here, well, this week. So I believe Sunday I have to pull cedars out of my ewe lambs and my mature ewes and get them into their breeding groups. So that's kind of why I wanted some of these pens cleaned out, just so I could rearrange some pens before breeding was to happen. Yeah, I think the boys are keen. <laughs>
This was nice to get finished today. They look really good. Uh, again, this is the pen that will be for Willow's group. Uh, what I might do is tomorrow I might work on cleaning this one out. Obviously it's deep. It took me a long time to do this side today and at first I think it was because I was getting used to the loader and then the more I thought about it I'm like no it's just really deep. We've been bedding these pens like crazy this winter. We're actually dangerously low on straw so there was just a lot of bedding material in that so it just took a little longer to clean out. I'm gonna probably try to get this one done tomorrow and then I'll start rearranging pens when everything's sort of done. I want the breeding groups all on that side and I want Willow's group over on this side so just a little bit of rearranging needs to be done. First impressions on my new telehandler. This is like the first real day I've been able to do a real hardcore job with it. I would say I think I was slow and awkward for most of the day getting the heavy out but uh, the controllers are very very much like my Bobcat so that part was just muscle memory. I knew exactly where my grapple switches were so that all worked out good. Oh my god these users are going crazy. I'll let you just watch those in the background while I talk. What I really loved her for was getting along the edges. I found the bobcat really, really hard visually to see where I was, so I was always knocking stuff. I always ran into the little uh, rods that hold up our manger boards. And with this one, I don't know if it's visibility, it's a little bit smaller. I was able to like carve right up the sides, no problem. Yeah, so far it's... Uh, I mean, I didn't hit anything, so I would call that a success. Hello, good afternoon. Number two is clean. We have two more that desperately still need cleaned out, uh, but the boys had the worst pen and I did clean them out before I went away. So 
I'm just running out of time to do it before this breeding session needs to start, which is tomorrow. What I might do is let them have their fun time for like maybe a week and then I might start juggling them around and clean out if I can, if I have time while we're waiting for these ladies, Willow's group, to have their babies. I don't know what it is, but whenever I get my penning mamas in their right pen, like a clean pen ready to lamb, I just, I get in a full on, just a better headspace, and I feel organized and prepared when they're on that far, far side, and I know they're gonna, I know they're getting close, I start to panic a bit. So this is like step one, and this makes me happy. What I want to do right now, um, because I want to pull those cedars tomorrow, and I think I have to do it by myself, I'm gonna have to go through my data maybe right now and just organize what use I want with which group of rams. I got my breeding groups all figured out for tomorrow, and for the first time in a long time, I'm like, do I have enough rams? We're a little tight on my ewe lamb group. The problem is I wanna keep my ewe lambs all together. I don't wanna mix them with mature ewes. Tried it before, does not work. I had terrible results. I think what happens is the mature ewes get a little, they take over the boys. And then the little girls are like, ew, I don't know, I don't know what to do here. Whereas I think if you only have the ewe lambs in their own pen, you don't have that sort of hierarchy or bullying going on. It's not really bullying, it's like the boys just, I don't know, the mature ewes just know what they want. <laughs> and then the little girls are like, I don't know if I want that yet or not. But when they're together, they seem to have it all figured out. I've been trying to keep my ram numbers pretty high in the ratio. So I used to aim for five ewes per ram when I seed her. Over the last couple of years, I've actually decreased that. And like the max would be four ewes per ram. And a couple of these groups, I have one group at like 4.3, which is fine. Those are mature ewes. They should be okay. But my ewe lamb group is like 5.3. The only sort of saving grace on that is I wasn't actually going to breed my June ewe lambs yet. They're kind of young in my books. I don't really like breeding ewe lambs until they're like minimum 10 months old. And these guys were born in June. Eh, they're close. They're like nine months, but... I tend to find they make better moms if, if they're a little more there upstairs. So I've been tending to wait a little bit longer. So minimum 10 months and then max like 13 months or something like that is what I try to aim for when I'm breeding ewe lambs. So I have, I talked to Rex when he was here and he said, put them in and if they don't breed, you're not really out a whole lot. You can put them in with your next group. So I think that's what we'll do is just not get my hopes up for a crazy good scan for my ewe lambs. And it's also a good way to sort of make this lambing group a little smaller. We're getting to be a bit lumpy. Most of my groups have been around that 85 to 100 range. And this group is like closer to 140. And that's the most we bred in a long time. And this is the problem with going to lambing only three times per year instead of my normal four. What, what I would typically do is the March group would have been bred in, in January. And then my June ewe lambs would have been uh, bred in April. So uh, they would have been split up and they w I wouldn't have had this big, huge uh, increase in this lambing group. So I think what will happen is nature will probably deal with the thinning of this uh, of this group and we will probably hold off on the ones that don't want to get bred until I believe July. Then those June ewe lambs would actually be 13 months which is what I actually prefer anyway but we'll see. My gut was telling me to hold off and Rex said no you got them in a group together now you better just breed them and I was like okay. Good morning everyone. It is Sunday and it is time for our ladies to join up with the boys. I organized the groups yesterday afternoon so I think we're okay. We are a bit shy on a couple groups 
for Rams. We're gonna keep our fingers crossed, play some romantic music, and hopefully nature will take its course. Uh, so today I'm going to be pulling cedars. I put these cedars in the day before I left, so that was 13 days ago today. I usually aim for 13 days. I could have done it tomorrow being 14 days. It's always a range between 12 and 14 and for whatever reason I've just always stuck with 13, lucky number 13. So I'm gonna do it today even though I'm solo. So I'm gonna pull out the cedar and also give them a shot of PMSG and that just helps them ovulate. This time of year is never really usually a good time for me for breeding. Now it is March and usually I'm breeding in April. So we'll see, we'll see. Maybe we could have gotten away with just doing cedars, but um, I think I'll just do both and pretend it's the April breed. And April just seems to be not a great time of year for whatever reason. So I'm gonna get going here. That's gonna take me a while today just cause I'm solo and uh, I don't wanna forget any steps. So I will be pulling the cedar first and then I'll do the uh, injection of PMSG. And then I'm gonna actually take the uh, scanner and scan the tag. Yesterday I entered in what group I wanted them in for in terms of what ram, what ram breeds I wanted them with. So hopefully when I scan them it should just show up and then I'll use a paint color on their tail ends as to what group. So group one, group two, group three um, will all have a different paint color and I'll just paint their tail end. It'll sort of act as a marking harness. And then uh, when the boys come through I'll put a mark on their on their neck as to so they're color coded so I don't screw up when they're running through really fast. Okay, here we go. Okay, we got a boys in, and uh, I'm just gonna scan their ear tag uh, just to confirm what group they're in. They're already predetermined in their groups, but I like to just confirm, and then I'll mark their necks as to what color of group they're in. Hey, right, William, you're group two. Billy, you're group two. I know that right away. I won't be able to see your purple. No, I won't. Hi, Danny. Love you, boy. I love you. You're getting so happy today. Hi, Harry. Hi, buddy. Hello. You know, I'm so so done.
All right, we finished and everything is cleaned up. Everyone is fed. However, I have not made it over to the lamb barn yet. So I wanna go over there and see my golden girls. It's been a minute. So I made a last minute judgment call and although it cost me money in cedars, I have decided to leave a few smaller ewe lambs out of this breeding session. I just was not comfortable on the condition of their frame quite yet. They're still quite, I just find them quite little still. Of course, she does not look little in this camera. Uh, but when you compare them to the March ewes and some of the bigger June ewes, which I did end up keeping uh, with, with the group, I just, they just didn't have quite the capacity as the other ones. So I'm like, you know what? I have way too many for how many rams I had anyway. So I think I pulled out like 26 and then I left the rest with the rams. So now my groups are pretty even. I think we're breeding about 110 now. Um, I just think it was pushing some of these ewes. Like they're pretty little. Oh, they're so scared. The little black ones. The other thing I've noticed is that we've got a few boys in Billy's pen. Two, if not three of them are kind of questionable. Like they're getting long in the tooth. They're looking pretty thin and just, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see if they perk back up with being in a breeding group. But uh, I think it's time that maybe I have to look at uh, shipping a few more boys out and bringing a few more back in. So I'm on the hunt for some more boys, it's looking like. for some grain? <laughs> you should not be looking for grain. Hey Marge? Getting a little stiff over there, big mama. Big stretch. <coughs> what are you saying? You're just starving popcorn, I know. Because you're just fading away to nothing. Oh, oh, oh. So it's about this time of year that everyone starts commenting on my videos when I show the Golden Girls. Are you not gonna shear them? If you've been watching for a while, you know that I sheared these ladies in the spring last year and I'll be doing that again this year. So they're on an annual shearing basis now uh, just because I don't need them cleaned up for lambing because they're not lambing anymore. So that is the scoop with them. Popcorn needs her feet trimmed, I'm noticing, uh, whereas the rest sort of stay pretty good on the uh, cement pad. So she, it must be a genetic thing with her because she's always had terrible feet. So she will be due for that. The question is when, probably after this lambing is done. So I'm thinking May, it'll be nicer to move them in, get them all sheared up, hoof trimmed, vaccinated, and then kicked back out here. And then uh, they're ready for the pasture for the summer. All right, well, that is done. I'm filling feeders. And then I think I'm gonna actually take the rest of this day and sort of chill. I think Mark just stoked a fire back at the cabin. So I think we're gonna go back there. I'm probably gonna fall asleep. <laughs> 